Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. How you doing? <laughs> it's a party. We have Alan here with us, Alan Johnson, the intuitive. How are you doing? How are you doing today, Alan? I'm doing well, Susan. I, I think we have, I don't I won't say too much fun doing this, but I think we really enjoy this. <laughs> we have a and lot of fun. Even Whenever if there are Alan people out there. Together, and, and hopefully please. we help people too, but um, I was thinking yeah. we would just do this even if we were pretending it's TV or something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We just have a little conversation. We'll just ignore all these people in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm Susan Lynn. This is Alan Johnson. And let me just say before we get started that you can check out his website, alanjohnsonintuitive.com. And it's A-L-L-E-N johnsonintuitive.com. He has a few sessions open in April. They'll be going to be gone momentarily. Just saying. Okay. We are here to be at your service. We are here to read for you uh, personally. I know there's a lot going on politically. I know that, but today is personal. So we're taking personal questions, put them in the chat. We'll do our best to read as many people as we can. Um, you know, if we have, you know, many, many hundreds of people here, it's obviously we're not going to get to be able to read everybody. But I do want to say, there's a lot you can learn from hearing what the spirit guides have to say to other people because they want the biggest bang for their buck too. So you may have a question that we don't get to answer, but somebody else might have a similar question or heck, you might even get a question answered. You didn't even know you had. I also, I also think that's very true. And I also think that we often see themes running through some of these evenings. Too, yeah. So if we're talking about relationships or moving or health or family, the big four, um, uh, and money, big five, I think um, there, there's always something to be learned. Always. From someone else's questions. And I'm rolling up my sleeves because we're going to uh -oh. dig right in. Uh-oh. And, you know, and I, I know I'm pretty sure I can speak for Alan when I say this, that we learn too, right, that mm -hmm. we get healed as we do sessions as we talk to you we're still always open to learning and growing ourselves absolutely all right well, thank Susan, you so you, much for joining you want to jump in or uh first of all thank you karen for the super sticker i appreciate it okay let's yeah let's jump in what is going on here um I can't, I didn't even read this. Sometimes spirit just says, pick this and you don't even read the question and you just know you have to pick it. So all away, girl. Hello. Um, checking on my oldest daughter, Samantha and hubby Winston pregnancy news and the upcoming months, 2024. <laughs> okay. Are you looking for positive pregnancy news? I, I see a pregnancy. It's not, I don't know that I see it in the next upcoming months. Maybe Alan has something different. The earliest I could see an announcement would be April, uh, but April, June, July, I'm also getting a sense, I'm getting a little more pink than blue. So it might be more of a little girl. Um, what are you getting, Alan? I get the same. I'm, I'm getting energy. Um, I'm getting energy around September through the end of the year. So um, that would make nine months. I'm not saying the birth would be in September, but I'm, I'm seeing that there, there's def someone pregnant in September. Um, I think it will be 24. Um, it's possible that the, that the due date is early 25, but the baby's early. I think this, this little girl, this little soul wants to be here. I agree with you about little and early. I don't think it's scary early, but I think it's on the small side and early. Also, uh, maybe has, you know how babies are born. Well, I don't know what Alan knows, but anyway, babies that are born with a lot of hair, uh, cause typically cause mom to have like indigestion. Uh, so I just feel like this baby could also be born, uh, with some hair. You're right. Okay. I did not, I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, and That's I don't, just... and, I, and I don't see any major health problems. Yeah, I don't, I don't either, but a little spitfire, a little spitfire. I love it. Okay. LOA girl. Uh, congratulations on the upcoming, uh, baby. All right. Uh, go ahead, Alan. You want to go ahead and spin the wheel? Sure. Oops. 
Uh, Vicky Valenti, uh, will I get the job I interviewed for two hours, that I interviewed two hours for? Oh. That's a very thorough um, interview, interview, Vicky. I believe that there's a very good chance you will. I think that there is some energy. I hear your frustration and perhaps annoyance and irritation um, in the process. But if if you can flip the script on that, I think I think it, you I think it came off well, um, and it may be between you and maybe two other two other people. Um, I would say that you may want to follow up. Um, this early this coming week and just ask if there are any decisions have been made or um, do they, is there any additional information they need? It feels good to me. It, it feels good or it's like this or something better. So what you always want to tell your spirit guides is um, this or something better. Yeah, because it feels like this um, this interview opened the door in some way with either the people who you were interviewing with or with that company. So um, it feels like it works out in your favor, um, but be open to the specifics of how that can occur. Yeah, be open because it's spirit is spirit is working here. If if we get locked into something that we think needs to happen, and spirit's trying to bring us something from the side. We don't even see it. And, and that could be a much better opportunity. Spirits got your back. They are guiding you. Just try to be as open as possible. And and Vicki, also, if if there was irritation around the process or how you, you feel it was handled, maybe go a little deeper into that on your end in terms of clearing the energy to see what triggered, what was triggered there for you around fear or um, feeling not good enough or perhaps challenged to hold your own in that in that spot. But I, I think you did fine. I do too. I think you did fine too. I'm just not sure that spirit, want it, I'm telling you, spirit is arranging the right job. So try to be Zen with it. I know that's hard to have a two hour interview, uh, but you're good. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. I'm just going to jump. One? Yeah, I do have one. Okay. Um, Oops, I did have one. Okay, hold on. I got it. Okay, Debbie. Uh, Debbie, Mr. Wright in 2024. <laughs> um, I, love gosh, the bar Barbie, I love the Barbie hands. I love the Barbie hands, but I swear to God. So you really need to be careful of Mr. Wrong in 2024 because I asked Mr. Wright and they said Mr. Wrong. Be a little bit more discerning in 2024 I, I get it that you're ready to like have a relationship and man, you want to talk about frustrating. A two hour interview is nothing compared to like dating. <laughs> dating is like the worst. So, um, but yeah, I think for sure, I, I do see a Mr. Right coming in. You might be having dinner with Mr. Ron when you see Mr. Right, but I think you're going to know like that's him right there. There he goes. He's walking by. What do you think, Alan? Debbie, I think, um, a relationship is something you've been thinking about for a while, but it became very acute recently. Um, so I think it's something that you, um, whether this is uh, the energy or astrologically, I think you've felt acutely this in the last few weeks, you really want a relationship. This is really starting to uh, not get on your nerves. Again, we're, we're, we're hearing about irritated people, but there's a sense that this is prominent as a goal. You're a little frustrated with it. Um, be with that energy, be with that sense of why can't I have this? Um, because I, I feel it is, it is very possible for you, but you may, you may have to kiss a few frogs before that. He's, um, he's there. He's coming. Yeah. After April, um, so much is happening after April, but I think some of the frogs are happening after April too. So <laughs> yeah, there's, I'm sorry, Debbie. I wish I could say, but there are frogs. There are definitely frogs. But, you know, being out with the frog is when you see Mr. Wright. I'm almost certain of it. Maybe it's Mr. Wright's brother. Maybe it's Mr. Wright's best friend. I don't know. It could be awkward, but, you know, it'd be I. Right. And there might be something, too, around um, uh, dancing, like uh, um, 
what's is it Texas two step? What what are the what are these are line dancing or something? It feels like it's an organized event where there's dancing and mixing, and it feels nice. like the energy is very really nice around that. That that's more in the summer, um, mid to late summer, but the energy feels feels really nice around um, two souls coming together. Nice. Report back, Debbie. Report back. All right. Go ahead, Alan. Spin the wheel. Wait one moment. Janet asks, will my son's life get easier? The last two years have been rough, medically and mentally. Susan, what do you get on that? I feel incremental, incremental, small steps. Uh, so as a mother, it might be hard for you to see these small steps. But with like, when you look back on it, you're going to be like, oh, wow, he's actually done quite a bit. But when you're in it, it's kind of hard to notice it. Uh, but I do think it's, it's very, it's incremental. All I can say is that they're small steps. I do think they're significant. Um, yeah, they're significant progress. But it just seems to be in sort of very small uh, bits. Yeah, and, and Janet, I think um, the last two years have been difficult. It feels like you're finally getting to a point now. What do they say? It's always darkest before the dawn. I feel like you're getting to a point where it is shifting. And part of your challenge is going to be pulling back a bit and letting him navigate some of the ways in which um, he has grown. Um, he has heard, I mean, he, he has appreciated and heard what has been said to him or prayed for him or wished for him. And I think there's an element now of maybe standing back and let him um, have an experience where he can act, where he's set up for success, not failure. I think it has been been difficult. So see what, see what this time again after April, there it again is after April and how he may step into a... Um, he may adult more. You may find that he's he's making um, decisions that are more um, from an adult standpoint. I don't get a clear. When you say adult, you mean independent. Right. And we're not right. trying to say he's he's you know um, you know immature. I, I I don't know. I just no, feel like you're saying independent. That's an important clarification. So there's going to be a little bit of um, like a kid on a bike with training wheels. You run along. You take the training wheels off and you run behind the bike. Um, so maybe give him a little space to see that he can um, he can handle this. There's there's a strong individual there. Good luck, yeah. Janet. Yeah, he is very strong. He is very strong. It's got to be hard to watch that watch your kid go through a tough period. Of time. Yeah. Okay. Who is up? Whoops. Oh, here's a here's a. Did the opposite. Go ahead. Did oh. I do that or did you? I, I meant, let's do Mary, and then I have, I have one. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Okay, hi, Mary. Thank you so much. Um, how will my husband's surgery go, is your question. How will your husband's surgery go? Well, I don't think it's a small surgery. I think it's a pretty involved surgery, um, a pretty um, complicated or involved surgery. I do think it's going to go well, but I see a rather a longer uh, recovery time than perhaps the doctors are saying, or, and it doesn't mean that it didn't go well. It just means that he just needs more recovery time than you guys think. So I think it might be good. And you might not be able to tell him this. You may not want to tell him this. This might be just for you to know, right? So if you're making plans, whatever those plans are, I would add that information to those plans. I may need a little bit extra help a little longer, or I might need extra help in general, whatever it is, because I just feel like it just, it's just a long, a longer recovery. What are you getting there? I, exactly the same. Um, I think the surgery is going to be very successful, but what I get is a protracted recovery period. And it's yeah. important, as Susan said, for you to know that now it could be that um, I know if, if he's going into a, a rehab situation after the hospital, um, that there are limits with that on Medicare. So you may be planning ahead to even have some sort of 
home health care for a period or, or help, help in some way. Um, but I think once the recovery period is over, um, you're all going to be glad that the surgery went well and he's, he's in a good place. Yeah. I don't know and if I, he likes, I, don't... I was going to say, um, if he likes music, Mary, I think um, music will be quite healing for him, whether he's listening to music, um, even during the surgery. I don't know if they play music during the surgery, but um, it feels like there's an opportunity for him to use healing music and sounds um, for his healing. That's amazing. I love that. I love that for him because uh, he might not have patience. I think the reason why we're both focusing on the fact that it's going to be a longer protracted recovery is because he's not going to like that. He's not going to have the patience for that. So headphones might be good uh, for him. And think about you're doing this on the download, right? You're, you're doing this behind the scenes. Uh, think about Oh, I happen to have this puzzle, right? I happen to have something for you to keep your, have you ever, you know, tried this app? I love this app, you know, not too much because he's going to get kind of pissy about it, but yeah, he's going to be fine. Just going to take a little extra. Okay. Tammy, how, your question is a home in Italy soon. Why don't I ever ask you these questions, Alan? Why don't I, well, I just call you up and say, Alan, can I move to Italy because nor, I know nor, what you would say, no, you can't move to Italy. Any, any okay. time, any time uh, Susan and I get questions like this, and we do get them, um, we strongly encourage people to move to Italy or buy a house in Italy, but to make sure it has several guest rooms. I believe that's <laughs> least, the advice we've been given. At least two. And I'll share a bath with her, but yeah. ideally, yeah, I we'll share a bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, gosh. Tammy, what is the question? What is the answer? Are you have anything, Alan? A little bit longer. I think yeah. a little bit longer. I do see it as a possibility. I think there are some other extenuating circumstances here. Um, I think money, uh, money and logistics seem to to be um, a bit of a stumbling block. But it could be. Um, I see it happening, but it may not be for a couple of years. Years, holy moly! She said she's going to share the keys. We get, we need to change tomorrow. Our, our whole tomorrow, thing right now, like yeah, it's going to be good. I don't know years. I got to say, Alan is freaking irritatingly accurate. Okay, just irritatingly accurate. But uh, I would say that. Um, well, I don't know what your timeline is. Your timeline might be years, right? That might be perfect. No, she's crying. That's a cry emoji. That is Tammy crying. I'm sorry, Tammy. Years, Alan? Um, why years? Why do you think years? What do you think is, well, is I get, like I get, slowing it down or blocking it? Um, settling, settling some uh, financial and legal issues back here. It's possible that there is a uh, not a purchase immediately, but maybe there's a rental or it doesn't mean Tammy's not going to Italy. It just means that settling on a property might take settling and closing on a property might take longer. So perhaps there's a lease or a lease to buy yeah. situation. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I that's I like that, Alan, because in my experience, sometimes you can get a green light uh, if you're leasing, but if you want to be an expat, like if you want to just move there, it's a red light. Like I've worked through with clients before that once they change their energy from I'm moving there to I'm spending three months a year there, spirit's like, oh yeah, three months a year, go right ahead. There's something happening here that you need to be attending to. Okay, energetically, physically, probably both energetically and physically. And you can work through this stuff once you figure out what that is. You can work through it um, and then probably get a green light. But it's it's gone beyond just a desire or, or to manifest. I mean, it's it's a reality. I just think the time the time frame seems a little shaky for me. Okay. Mi, mi piace. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but anyway, he, just, like he probably just like said it. some cuss word to you in, in Italian. No. <laughs> no, 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 that's not, that's right. all Italian. I know. All right. Okay. Your turn. All right. Uh oh, 
Oh, hey, oh. Kevin's here. Kevin, the healing medium. How you doing? Hey, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. Um, you can always ask other psychics. Me, we may be wrong. You never know about these things. Okay, okay. Susan Brown says, will I get past this autoimmune flare-up that is disabling me? I'm so sorry to hear this, Susan. That does not sound fun. Um, I swear to God, something, all they can talk about is your ears. I don't know why you can go in the chat and, and help me out with that, but, um, what, something is going on with your inner ear. I don't know if you are hearing tones, if you're, if you're hearing like, uh, if you got tinnitus or something's going on, I don't think it has to do with the autoimmune, but I think that it has to do with something. Cause there's a, there's a connection there. Now, will you get past it? Um, I feel like you will. I, I mean, and this is a flare up, but I, but I do feel like there's a gradual releasing. They want you to talk. They want you to check on your diet, your stress level. Um, there's something in your environment. I know that you, this stuff maybe doesn't make sense, but I'm telling you, I have a lot of clients with autoimmune. And I, I know this without a fact that, that weird things affect your autoimmune and causes you to have a flare up. So there's something in your environment. It could be you're, you're also very allergic to like chemicals, like, um, bathroom spray, Lysol, not specifically, but you're very allergic to these types of chemicals. And, and you're, what, uh, what this is, is an allergic reaction, right? Your autoimmune is an allergic reaction. So aller allergy to food, sugar is a really big one. Um, stress and something in your environment, try to start winnowing, you know, remove things and then slowly bring them back into your life. And you'll figure out what is really triggering you. What are you getting, Alan? I agree with what you said. There are irritants within her environment that are triggering this. And some of those irritants include people. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. I know, I know. Um, so that that may is that be the stress component. Mm -hmm. That's the okay. stress component and some chronic, um, just like energy that doesn't um, mix well. And so th there are, it feels that there are solutions to this in terms of getting staying, getting really grounded, grounding her energy, staying within her energy, um, grounding herself to the earth. Um, but it may, the autoimmune may be a way in which her body is talking to her about some of these other issues that I don't know that they have a quick fix. Okay. So. None of this is quick. That's why it, it's hard to like evict people in your house. Like, so that's like a big, like, like a big problem. What I might suggest you do is start with the environmental problems, which are probably going to trigger the people in your house anyway. Um, so are there people in your house? Can you let me know? Are there people in your house? Maybe it's neighbors. I don't know. It's something weird. Anyway, start with, start with those things. Always start with your diet. Start with your stress level. Yep. Sabine says, check for carbon monoxide. It's anything in your environment can trigger this. Um, and you have this inner ear thing. I don't know what that's about, but it's also another problem. It's quite a booyah base of, um, of uh, triggers coming at you, Susan. Uh, again, you're sensitive. You're opening up, as so many people are in this in this period. Um, and so there are things that don't align with your your energy anymore. And I'm and I'm, I don't get the sense you have to evict anyone, but it's about recalibrating Sorry. relationships. Um, Board boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Yeah, boundaries. And so it's. Um, I also think, you know, working with a healer or an energy healer or someone that can clear your energy um, can also help you um, withstand some of the, they really are assaults on your, your energy. Speaking of salts, I think Epsom salts and item, you know, bath, baths with Epsom salts can also rebalance you. And it may also have to do with, with um, solar flares and you're just, you're a very, very sensitive um, individuals. So part of this is building up the strength of your 
your core and then your protective energy around you. Yeah. That mold comment is a really, really big. Somebody said mold, mold is a big deal, guys. It really, our bodies just can't, we get to a certain age and our, our body's been fighting back this um, allergens, right? Our whole lives. And we didn't, we didn't know. And then your body's like, uncle, I give up. And it, and then the allergies just kind of win. Um, so she says she moved into the woods to be alone. So that mold in the woods um, is a thing. And I think when Alan is talking about people in your house, cause that's why I asked you if you lived alone. I, and he's talking right now about you being very sensitive energetically. I feel like this could also be energies, you know, ghosts or energies around you that are, um, that are also just causing, it's just a, it's a booyah boss. I mean, it's, it's, a, but it's also an assault. There's a lot of things coming at you at once. Really and truly, if you're living in the woods, if you're living in a place that's older, you've got to clean it. You, not you, because this this will this will blow up your immune system. You've got to have somebody clean it, um, and I mean clean it with a toothbrush. Uh, really, really, really clean it. Yeah. Um, and the stone spirits here. Hello, Allison. Um, and she's got some good advice for you to use red jasper. So that's good too. So we've got like a whole like a uh, medic. Uh, <laughs> we got a, a energy hospital of uh, here. Okay, Alan, go ahead. Was that mine? I don't know, but you go ahead. Move from this Texas. is this is yours, Susan. <laughs> yeah, Sandy Beach wants to know: Will I move from Texas? That's what I ask Alan every other day, isn't it, Alan? When it will is. I move, please? Uh, will I move from Texas in 2024? Sandy Beach, who wants to give her the bad news? Do you have good news? <laughs> She's moving to Georgia. <laughs> moving to Georgia. <laughs> That's not good news. No, I'm not sorry. No, I I love Georgia. I love all, all our 50 states. Um, I think that Possibly. again, it feels like it may be delayed. It feels like there are extenuating circumstances that are going to play out late spring, summer, into the fall that may, I don't want to say would preclude a move, but might make it uh, more, more easier to stay there. Um, I'd say more in 25, 26. And it feels like the energy would be more Susan's disagreeing. That's good. It's good for. No, I'm good. not disagreeing. It's, I'm grimace. This it, is a grimace. It's creative tension, people. <laughs> what you're witnessing. <laughs> you don't have a poker face. Um, I know. I, I think it will happen, but it feels like there are going to be better options, or the path will be made. the The path will be clearer, and more straightforward. Um, in in twenty five. I, I would say what I do, because I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know. Um, You're not I'm a, um... what I would say is I would ask, why do you want to move in 24 and get to the bottom of what Alan is picking up at? So Alan is picking up. Something isn't really working for a move in 24 instead of like having a hissy fit and like throwing yourself on the floor. Like I do when he tells me that. What I would suggest you do is take some deep breaths, take some deep breaths and ask for the most benevolent outcome because sometimes spirit is doing it for our own good. It doesn't make sense to us because we can't see everything, but it's sort of like what I'm getting right now is unanswered prayers, right? Sometimes it's an unanswered prayer. Um, but I feel like if if you move in 24, it's going to be very, very late in 24, uh, closer to 25, <laughs> Sandy Beach. Sandy Beach said, oh, poop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, and, and Sandy, I don't know if um, some of this is tied up in what happened in 2021. Um, and it feels like this is a situation you're going to look back on and say, I'm glad I waited, or I'm glad that I'm glad the first option didn't work out. I'm glad what, what, what unfolded for me in late 24, you might, we might make 24 Sandy. 
um, late 24 into 25, is that it was just a better option. It was cleaner. It was less stressful. It was more straightforward. Yeah. It's, so, it's, and, it's for your own good. That's all your guides are saying. It's for your own good. So, um, yeah, MBOs, most benevolent outcome. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I could. Um, hey, Alan, don't pick the ones. We're going to give them bad news. Come on. I'm, <laughs> that's, I have no comment to that. Let's let's have a happy night, Susan. <laughs> let's have all right, let's night. do that. Okay, I got one here. Thank you, Andrea, for your super chat. Thank you yes. so much. Um, okay, Lori Kittle says, uh, my sister and I inherited our dad's house. There are some personal issues coming up. How is the future going to be between us good or not so good? Surprisingly, I don't know what Alan's getting because he's inscrutable. I'm like a, a 4K movie theater experience right here. Uh, I get I get more good than not. I get more good, but I think it is delicate. I think it there there are. I'm I'm going into my heart space. I am feeling like oh that that didn't feel good, but I feel like there's really a possibility for it to kind of even out. I don't somehow it's like it goes from being really like walking on eggshells of being kind of unsure to being okay. Do, do you get that or something completely different? I do. And and Lori, hi. Um, I think I did a reading for Lori um, previously. And it's um, it's a situation not without its um, challenges. But I, I believe at the time, um, we did see it working out over time. It's um, It seems uh, intractable right now. Um, but I think the circumstances are going to change and they're able to um, um, live, live there in a, in a um, civil way or um, make, make other arrangements. Um, it, feels like there's an, it feels like there's another family member. I don't remember this, Laura, if we talked about this, but it feels like there's another family member, whether it's a sibling or, an, or a, a close, close friend, who would step in and help um, resolve some of this as well. So let's see, um, anyone guess I'm gonna say after April? Um, after April and into the summer, into the fall, I think there are gonna be some shifts. <clears throat> in, a, in, a positive, is, in a positive way. In Lori. a positive way, right. Yeah. April is the, the eclipse, you guys, that's why, uh, even before we knew it was an eclipse, all of us last year were going April. The answer is April to everything, uh, because in whatever way, it's going to be a game changer for people. So it's going to shift the energy. Sometimes if you're stuck or you just want something to happen, you know, throwing the energy up in the air and seeing where it lands again is is at least something. And it's, um, and it's, and it's been described, Susan, as a breakdown, breakthrough, or sometimes all oh. both of those at once. Break down, break through. My favorite yeah. things to do. I love breaking down just to break through. I love that stuff. Yeah, Who it's but Stupid true, true that, true that. But I think that the energy is really supporting a breakthrough, um, and sometimes you have to break down to get to get there. But there's the energy is really, really supportive of um, making important. Um, gaining important awarenesses about our stuff and about um, the stuff around us. And in some cases it will involve um, leaving um, situations that are no longer viable or no longer support us in the, in the, um, in the way we've evolved. And that can involve um, grief and sadness and loss, but it can also involve um, new starts. Although, new as start. I always say, Susan, you go first. <laughs> You're here for new start. Go first on the that breakthrough, breakdown, loss, and then new start. You go first. Um, yeah, I'll go first. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. But yeah, haven't I'll but haven't we all done these in our lives? At a certain point, we've yeah, had but we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to. But when we look back, we see in a perhaps um, we see the lesson and the and the gain that was made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I think it's called maturing. 
Okay, I'm going to help out Rob here. Rob Perry, um, am I going to get a job soon? It's been over a year and you're about to lose everything. I'm so sorry, Rob. Um, <clears throat> I do, this is another, I think this is why Spirit directed me to your question because I think that this whole April thing is going to be helpful for you. It does, it does, it's, it's sort of like, um, it spins the wheel. It gives you an opportunity to, start afresh to break down and break through exactly what Alan was saying. Um, I do feel like regardless of you got a job tomorrow, things have gone kind of a bit far. So you're going to really need to, as soon as you procure this job, you're going to need to go to these creditors and say, here's my job. Here's my, you know, pay stub or whatever my, my proof. I want to work out a deal with you. Um, I feel like one of your creditors is not going to be very accommodating. Um, I want to say to you, Rob, that it, this is basically exactly what Alan was just saying, is that if you lose some things or if you lose, God forbid, everything, on the other side of that, you're still you. You you're going to come through this bigger and better. It's, it's, it's almost like um, there's a sense on the other side, whatever happens, whether you don't lose anything at all and you just put everything in some sort of, you know, like payback kind of situation on the other side of it, you feel like I just survived death. Like I, like I got a new lease on life. Like I, I walked out of that burning house. So there's this sense in your energy on the other side of this, that you're okay, that you survived it. So I do want to say that to you. It is a tough situation. It's a tense situation, but I feel like on the other side, you feel lucky. You feel, you feel blessed, honestly, on the other side. And that, and, and that sounds, I agree with Susan. And that sounds like so much hokum when you're going through it. And again, I, I, I know having been through my own, I'm not comparing my situation to you, Rob, but there's there's a sense of um, for you it is darkest before the dawn. I feel feel you looking back on this time, and saying this forced me to um, get on a path that I hadn't considered, that I hadn't even wasn't even on my radar. I didn't even know I it was available to me. And if I hadn't gone through this, and if this hadn't happened to me, and this person come into my life, and this situation evolved the way it did. I wouldn't be here where I am. And I'm I'm thinking that um, you're going to be, not only are you going to be back on your feet, but you're going to be better than ever. And I, th and I think you're also going to be working with people um, who are also struggling. There may be some um, opportunity for you to pay to, uh, there will be an opportunity for you to pay it forward. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to really figure out what you're made of. I mean, it, and I know you probably think that now, but it, you're going to get through this. I, I have every hope. I have every knowledge that you're going to get through this. You're going to be a little bit different person, but it's, it's a better version. You're stronger. You're going to be a different person. Um, I'm sorry you're going through it, though. I really am. Yeah, I am too, Rob. And um, I, I, again, it feels um, you're just going to have to have faith. You're going to have to believe that this is um, happening in a way that's going to transform you. I think... I think you're going to be trans. You really are going to be transformed by this, and, and you're going to come out the other end. Yeah. Um, sending you a lot of love and light, dear. Okay. Absolutely. And and reach out to people. Don't don't isolate. Try to reach out to people. Talk to people. Get get help. Get free help. You know, use your resources. Like this. Okay, I just want to say before you move on, thank you, Alloway girl. That's so kind of you for that super chat. Um, you'll have to name your grandbaby either Susan or Alan. <laughs> Swallen. Swallen. No, do not listen to him. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so we have Earthstar. Should I focus on moving or my creativity? Oh my God. <laughs> really? Wow. I think that's a very creative statement, Earth Star. I think that your creativity is already here. It's already made. All right. Next, next question. Next uh, question. No, I think um, why why does it have to be, uh, why is it one or Either the other? Or. Why is it a, um, 
why is it polarized? I think um, try and see the question in your mind more broadly about how can you have both of these because I don't I don't think they're mutually exclusive. But I do think that you're at a time in your life where your creativity is extremely important to you. You feel that you don't want to put it on hold anymore. You don't want to um, deny it. And I think it is surging forward. Um, so I, I hope that's helpful. Um, I, I don't know how the moving comes into that. Um, it may be possible that you're able to do, you're able to achieve both. Well, I feel like she must feel that the moving is getting in the way of the creativity, that it's like, um, I feel like, I feel like you just need to throw some boundaries down and either with yourself or with others. So if I can't be creative because of my current living situation, um, then I need to, then, then I need to understand why that is. Um, but if she had to choose one or the other, Alan, she has to choose one or the other. What would she, what would she choose? I think the creativity is my sense that it's time. There's, there's an issue here of um, not wanting to, you know, a dream deferred. There's a poem. I think a dream deferred is a, broken winged bird. Um, so the idea is, um, because I live in Tennessee. Honey, I live in Texas. Come on now. Yeah. I don't know that creativity is conditional where you live. Um, but I feel that there, I feel there's a way to, um, solve this in the interim. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I do see you moving, but I think it may not, I don't see you putting your, your creativity on hold. So what happens is when you, when you do your creativity and you're in your heart, you're in your joy, your vibration gets higher. When your vibration's higher, your spirit guides can manifest easier with you because you're matching their vibration. And if you need to move, it'll happen because you're in your heart, you're in your joy. So that, that's why the creativity is the most important thing. It feels like there's a, a also a circle of creative people to be met exactly where she is. And it's, it'll be ironic um, because <laughs> here she is and suddenly there's this group that comes forward, whether um, that's that, true. that she connects with. And then it's like, well, I'm not quite ready to move. I want to get to know these people and spend that time. That sounds like them. spirit. That's got spirits fingerprints all over it. That's exactly what they would do. They would put something that's just for you right under your nose, hoping you'll find it. And when you do find it, you get extra credit. <laughs> but it does require some initiative on your yeah. part, Earth Star yeah, One, in terms of finding this group. I mean, I mean, every it's everything from a quilting circle to some group of uh, some um, open um, open artist studio place to an, uh, art fair or music. It, 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 you're going to have to hunt something down and then pursue it. But once you find it, it feels like the community is there. Your tribe is yeah. there. Yeah. It's right under your nose. Go looking for it, girlfriend. Okay. Uh, thank you, Suzanne Grisby. That's so sweet of you. And I just want to say, I need to scroll up here for a second. Um, all right. She wants to say, Suzanne says, will I be a psychic person for small town? Not big like Susan. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Are you talking about my size? Are you talking about my size over here? Uh, <laughs> like, uh, oh my God. That. Mm. Let's, ahead, debunk, let's debunk this. Let's debunk it. I'm not big. No. No, I wasn't. This isn't about. This isn't about this isn't about you, Susan. Um, it's not. I am okay. So there you go. I think you know. Bloom where you're planted, Suzanne. Bloom where you're planted. We're we're all called to um, our path, no matter where we are, no matter where we live. We we can make we can make changes um, within ourselves in ways that. Um, I, I mean, I think I believe there are creative people in Tennessee, and I believe there are psychic people in small towns everywhere. I think that, um, and the, the beauty of the internet is we can connect with all these people. 
we can, it doesn't matter where you live, we can connect with people who are doing yeah. all sorts of things, creative things, um, yeah. psychic things. So <clears throat> when you say, will I be a psychic person for small town? Um, I think there's a, definitely a role for you in that. Um, I think sometimes, depending on the small town in the state, there may be more um, pushback about whether you do this uh, or how you do this or if you're a tool of the devil, um, which is something um, I was accused of and not a small town. Uh, but I, my answer is um, yes, you will. And just uh, work with spirit and um, and open up to it open up to it and um, all things change when we do. So it'll be interesting to see what changes you see around you in your small town. Yeah. yeah. Stay, take, take your, take your steps, girlfriend. Let spirit guide you. Don't, don't, don't put a limit on spirit. Just go for totally. your guidance, go where you're guided. Like Alan says, you might be online. I, I didn't ever think that I would be doing this ever. So allow spirit to guide you. That's the best thing. Um, we wish you all the best, Suzanne. And thank you, all, all new Maggie Who. Thank you so much for that super chat. Um, okay, Alan, do you want to? Um, did you? I will, up? I will, I will. Thank you, Andrea. A lot of questions about moving. My and favorite. This just, this just fascinates me, so I'm going to um, pick it. M.I. asks, when will I be able to start my beehive? I think beehives are fascinating, just are fascinating. fascinating. And I think that they are um, a gift. It's a gift to nature. It's a gift to the world. Um, I don't see any impediments to this. I don't know if you <clears throat> have a location where you can have your beehives, but I think this is something that's going to be happening in 2024. And I see you... Um, I don't know how long it takes bees to make honey, and I don't know what the uh, Food and Drug Administration says about selling it, but I see you give, I see honey in jars, and I see you uh, marketing that or giving it away to friends. I see that happening in 24, expanding in 25. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I don't see any impediment. It can, it feels like, there, you're feeling like there's something kind of maybe, maybe it's a block, maybe it's a timing. I don't know, but that's going to fall away very quickly, very easily. And then the, it's just going to happen very, very quickly. Is she going to be busy? Yeah. Like a bee? I wasn't trying to give you that. <laughs> oh, you Is she going to be busy? Oh, why am oh, I got busy work. like a bee, I yes. I have to work for it. Okay. You have to work for it with me. I know all your tricks. You okay, do. Nicole Eddy says, hello. I want to be an independent of child support for my ex. My son wants me to start a YouTube channel. I'm thinking of doing reactions to scary videos. Would this be good and make us really good money soon? Okay, girlfriend. We are on YouTube right now, <laughs> but we're not YouTubers, but we are psychic. So let's see. I'm not sure about the soon part. I'm not sure that you can make this happen viral. I don't, I'm not sure this is going to blow up like super viral, super quick. Even if it does, the guides are showing me, even if it does, like, let's say you're really good at it. And I think you actually will be. Um, and your vid couple of your videos kind of really take off. It takes a little bit more than that to really bring in the money on YouTube. Um, so I say do it. I, I say do it. I think you're I, I think you're gonna do it. I think somehow your son's gonna be involved. I don't know how. Um I, because I, I don't, but anyway, yeah, I say do it. Just I just not sure that the timing, I'm not sure it's gonna pay off really quickly. Um, how about you, Alan? Yeah, I, I think it could be a fun a fun thing to do with your son, but I think um, the dreams of money hand over fist, I think that the, the payoff could take um, quite a bit of effort, I mean, to get there. I mean, I think um, organizing the video, find, filming, editing, uploading um, could be quite like a, a part-time job in order to um, realize any, any um, 
monetary gain from it. But, but there will be some, and it's going to be fun to do, and I think it's something in your son can do. Um, but you may find that you have to take it bigger in a way that may involve more investment or time. And there'll come, they'll come a juncture where you decide whether to expand it or to um, go into something else to make that, that, um, that money. I think Alan hit on something the spirit guides are want me to kind of underline. And that is, it's going to take more time than you think. It's going to take more time to edit than you think it is. Okay. So just keep that in mind too. Um, but, but I agree with everything he said. It's going to be fun. It is going to bring money in. Um, and, and I, I think you should go for it, especially since YouTube is free. You know, you can start it without any outlay of money. Kelly, Kelly Williamson reminds us that towns of all sizes need a town wizard. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, Kelly. Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Um, quite true. Uh, right. You, I'm going to grab one real quick. Okay. Don Eschenberg says, will finances get any better for my family? Times have been really hard. I'm sorry, Don. That is tough. It feels, it feels, I can feel it. I can feel it. It's a uh, scraping bottom, scraping the bottom of things. I feel like something new's coming in for you, Don. Either I don't know if you're working. If, if you're not working, there's a new job. If you are working, there's a better opportunity for more money working. And there's all kind of ways you can work. You know, if you if you're if you're a stay-at-home mom, there's there's ways you can bring in money. Um, but I feel like money is coming in. But it but it does feel a little uneven at first. What yeah, are you getting, Alan? I, I get that this is a very dark time for uh, Dawn and the family. And it's been very demoralizing and um, depressing. It's been hard to stay upbeat. Um and it's been it's been psychologically and emotionally depressing. I think that um, that will shift. Um, guess when? After April. Um, and oh I think God. that there may be a situation where you're where people are working really hard to um, at jobs, maybe multiple jobs, but the jobs are actually much better paying than where you've been, and so that there's there's a, an, an opportunity there to bring in more cash and get get finances up to a a comfortable level. Yeah. Just that, hang in there. Yeah. And that may, some of that may come through some uh, connection at an existing job or family and that there's an opportunity to really put your skills to work in a way that doesn't yeah. feel so demoralizing. Yeah. There's something in the wind. There's something coming around to you. Okay. Just keep your, keep your, keep an open mind. Because spirit's going to bring something kind of weird, kind of at a weird angle, a weird option, a weird, you need, you're going to be like, what? Just give it a try. It, it might really end up being quite a, a lot of money, a, a, quite a steady income. And you, yeah, and it, and it has legs. I think it's odd, not odd, <laughs> but I think it has legs in terms of something that you could do for a long time and make money. Right. I'm going to just go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to put up. Oh, okay. I'm going to tilt my camera up so you guys can see the turtle turtle painting. I'm going to try. Oh. There it is, everybody. Okay. Ta-da. Have you All had right. questions about your turtle painting? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. I wanted to bring this up, um, uh, H888Steel, because... Um, um, you had a reading, a Kabbalah reading with Vicki Skirbo, um, and both Susan and I have had those Kabbalah readings, and we can highly, highly recommend them. And um, your question is, uh, Vicki Skirbo, Dr. Vicki Skirbo said you'd have an entirely new direction after your birthday in June. Any info on what that direction may be? Um, I think it could be uh, such a, uh, uh, I don't know if you're involved in fashion or travel or merchandising. I don't even know if those, if merchandising still exists, but it feels like there's something that involves um, you as a businesswoman and something that perhaps in a way that uh, a role that might've typically or historically traditionally been held by a man. Um, so I think you're moving into 
a role that is um, well suited oh. for you. Check that out. Okay, designer. I see you moving into a role that is actually quite well suited to you. It might it might be that or, or that there's a male component that you're not only doing the designing, but you're doing the marketing. You're doing some type of um, uh, buying or or a playing playing a, a a role further up the food chain. And um, I think the designing you enjoy, but there's a role here where you can um, affect more change. I want to say you can see. Um, you can see these kitchens through in a way that are, are, it's really dynamic. It's very dynamic and creative and having you in that role makes the whole process go easier for everybody else. I don't know if I'm describing that correctly, but it feels like a very exciting opportunity for you. You're gonna have to work hard and um, convince some people that you can do this higher up the food chain, but I think you're going to be great at it. And you're unique. You're you're and another thing that Alan's kind of intimating is I, I feel like anyway, is that you're going to bring your own unique vision. You're going to have a very different vision. And what I see happening is, is that that vision is going to be like so cool and so different that it's going to be like a signature and everybody's going to want that signature. I want that kitchen. No, that one. The one that has that thing in it. Also, you're very techy, so you might be doing a lot of smart um, mm -hmm. things in in you know the refrigerator or whatever, whatever. But it's also it's something about you're just you just see things differently than everybody else. That's great, right? But it also means that until you get buy in, until people are like, yeah, people want to buy what she's doing, people are going to think. No, no, people don't want that. They want this normal looking thing. Once they give you a chance and you show them what you can do, you're going to leave them behind is what's going to happen. You're probably going to kind of eclipse them. You're going to move into a, your own business or, yeah. I mean, you can take this as far as you want to go. Yeah, I like it. And I think it shows sort of a, what may have become sort of a calcified or stodgy business or way of doing things for the company you yeah. work with, I feel really it revitalizes it. And you're seen as sort of a star there, but th there will have to, there will be some um, pushing you'll have to do, or not pushing. Um, you're going to have to prove to them that you can do this and then you're off and running. You know what I just saw, Alan, for her is um, I saw her and I don't know, um, they, he, her, I'm not sure what your pronoun is. Anyway, I saw these uh, like designs, selling designs. So they could take the design and work it up and sell it online. Like you can go to Etsy and buy designs for kitchens. You can buy designs for whatever. I mean, architects do them, but designers, I never thought about this. This is kind of brilliant in a sense. As a designer, you could say, here's my design for a living room. And here's the couch I would buy. Here's all the things that go together. And for an extra 25 bucks, I'll give you all the things to go together and five variants. So five like interplayable things that can go together. So I see selling this kind of design independently even, which is a lot more money because you're just selling the same design. And I... Um... And lastly, I think that um, you may want to get a good attorney at some point because I think you're going to want to protect your, oh, as sure. you rise up through this company or or this where you are now and you're branching out into selling designs, you're just going to want someone to help you with a business plan and then also legally um, to protect your interests. But I, I think I think this is a great springboard for you. Yeah, I really do. I think it is going to take off. Uh, best of luck. Uh, let us know how it goes. Wow. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, before you move on, thank you, I am Astro. Thank you so much, dear. You don't have to do that. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well, but I really appreciate your super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, go ahead. So you want to read this one? Sure. Sandy Middlestet asks, any message from Murphy, my Karen Terrier, that I have had to put down? I'm so sad. I feel guilty. Oh. Um, I'm so sorry, Sandy. Um, 
I had a Karen Murphy. Terrier in my life at one time, and they did are. Did you really? That's so yeah. funny. Yeah. I did too. As an uncle, as an uncle. Oh, as um, an uncle. They, they are. They have an opinion, like like terriers. Oh, yeah, they have they're... an opinion about most things. That was Toto, wasn't Toto yeah. in the Wizard of mm -hmm. Oz? A Karen yep. Terrier. Yep. Okay, Murphy. Let's let's call Murphy up on the on the bat phone here. I see Murphy in hog heaven, chasing balls, chasing squirrels. I see Murphy. Um, Barking at leaves. Um, I see Murphy in a good place. I, I see um, I see him um, in a good place. Very independent. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't see any other humans around him. I think that he's just doing his own thing and playing with other dogs and um, wagging his tail. Yeah. I, he wants to show me the mustache wet after drinking water. Uh, so I don't know if that's like a thing that you would remember. Um, but, and then ears, like maybe scratchy ears or from time to time having something with the ears. Uh, but I, I totally agree with Alan. He's having, he's having the ball. He's having the time of his life. Now here's the thing. Don't worry about feeling guilty. I've had to put down. I've had to let dogs go. I've had to be the one to go to the vet with the dog. It's it's a horrible, horrible thing. I don't know which is worse, right? Letting them go on their own, then they suffer, or helping them go. It's just it's just all bad. But Murphy doesn't want you to feel guilty. This this dog is happy. This is a happy dog. He's kind of got a little swagger thing that he does. He kind of swagger. He has a walk. He has a certain walk, and um, and he's very happy. What is with my ears? Anyway, he's very happy. He do not feel guilty. He loves you. You did him a favor. You let him go out with honor. You let him go out with honor. He's, he didn't. He was in more discomfort than I think you knew. Dogs mask their discomfort. They hide. Uh, you know, they they hide that very well. Um, he was in more uh, discomfort than than you think, and and you really helped him. He's also, um, I'm tugging my ear too. I know, I know. Um, right? He uh, was proud and he said it happened exactly when it needed to happen. When he yeah. passed, it was, That's the timing right. was perfect. And yeah. he said he didn't, very, a lot of pride. He didn't want to show too much. Um, yeah. yeah. A lot so of I'm pride. sorry, Sandy, but I, I good boy. he's a good boy. <laughs> he's, he's a, a good very boy. good boy. He's still a good boy. He's still a good boy. He said, I'm still a good boy. Mandy Nuck says, good morning. I've been hearing someone calling my name for over a year now. Could you please help me with a message for my guide? Thank you. I'm, I've been hearing more people talk about this, Susan. More, um, more of us um, talking about hearing um, our name called or, um, yeah, names called. What do you, what do you make of this? Well, okay. Sometimes, first of all, when you have any kind of experience, whether it's hearing your name called or having a vision in a dream or seeing something out of the corner of your eye, whatever it is, uh, uh, the number one thing I want you to understand is that's proof. That's proof. That is psychic hearing. Sometimes these things happen simply to prove to you that you can hear that you can psychically hear, that you can psychic, you can psychically smell the cigarette smoke, okay? That that isn't there. So sometimes it's simply about trying to teach you, hey, wake up to your abilities. Your abilities are here. Wake up to them. So that's number one. Number two, um, someone calling your name for over a year now. I don't think is it. I mean, it's there's definitely somebody calling your name. And so so that's that's true. Um, but why? Do you feel it's a guide or someone um, in spirit? You know, right now I'm getting that they're trying to tell you to wake up. Wake up to your abilities. You know, and, and it's so funny because humans, right? We're like, what? <laughs> what for the love of God? What? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and it's and it's like, oh, I'm just saying hi. <laughs> it's like for the love of God. Um, I think it's they're trying to get you to wake up to your abilities, Mandy. That's what I think. Yeah, and I'm and I'm wondering, Mandy, if um as a child, <clears throat> I'm seeing you on the beach or out playing, running along the beach. And a, a parent calling you, calling your name over and over. I think sometimes it took a lot. You, you were often lost in play or lost in your reverie, as a, as ch children should be out playing outside, or even reading a book. I think sometimes I don't know if your parents or who raised you said, "My gosh, I have to. What do I need a bullhorn to get your attention?" So there, it feels like there is a precedent for um, getting your attention and. Um, once you hear that, you can say, I hear you, and what would you like to tell me? And see what happens, see what comes, yeah. see what comes yeah, from okay. that. Send me a message. And 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 all all of you guys, you can use the words. If I were to imagine what this message was about, when you say I if I if I imagine, it really does work because your brain's like, never mind, they're not talking to me. So use that and you can get messages from your spirit guides. What would I imagine this is about? Who is this? I do think it's a spirit guide. Um, so, so what that means is waking up to your abilities, you know, take a class, um, take an online class, take a local class, go to your local crystal shop, you know, find a way to start figuring out, you know, use Oracle cards, um, find a way to start connecting. Yeah, it's a wake up call, um, and be aware that it's it's it comes from love. It's come it come it, again. It feels it also comes from the past, so it could be caught up with some loved ones in spirit as well. Yeah, yeah. I just have to do this one, Susan. They all jumped on board. Uh, thank you, Victoria Cleary. I appreciate that. Yeah, go ahead. What what is it? <laughs> Great. And I, I want to say I am getting to this question. Um, I Listen, guys, we have 752 people in chat. I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can. Thank you, Kitsy, uh, for your super chat. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, Jody. I'm going to try to get to yours. And I'm going to try to get to this next one. Hold on just a minute. Um, well, we have a lot of questions. We're just going to try to get to them, guys. Okay. Pat March, is he finally going to put a ring on it after 12 years? Pat, this is a crazy question. I'm really hesitant to even ask this question. What is it with his dirty underwear? Is he leaving his dirty underwear on the floor? I mean, what is going on? Why is somebody just telling me about his dirty underwear? I, why does that even matter? Like, this is the problem I have with my spirit guides. I think I need an intervention. And my question is, do you want him to, and I'm assuming you're talking about your finger, um, why do you want him to put a ring on it? Um, I think that there are, there's there's a uh, resistance on his part. There's a reluctance. Um, the love is there. I think the companionship is there. Um, but this has sort of gotten, you, you're, you're looking at the relationship through whether you have a, a ring or not. And I, I think that there's maybe a deeper conversation. If, if he doesn't, are you going to stay with him? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it feels like a, a false, how do I put it? I don't know, but you should be careful because I don't know if Pat's a woman, but I am. <laughs> Well, Pat, um, <laughs> I would say there, there, there. This could end up being sort of um, could polarize you too by you saying you unless you have a ring. Um, I think it'd be. But what it if would that's how Pat feels? Foolhardy though to give an ultimatum. I think it's okay to feel that way, but know that there's there's a, a deep conversation that needs to happen first about why this hasn't happened, why it hasn't happened, and. How, how about you put a ring on their finger, his finger? Wow. That's a, now that's a, now that's an idea. I, I, and, and I am says, yeah, a ring doesn't fix any, anything. That's true. Um, 
I hear the frustration the, though. The bottom line is you guys need a conversation. The bottom line is you really need a heartfelt conversation, not done at the spur of the moment when you're sabotaging, you know, jumping on somebody, but maybe go to dinner, have a relaxing time. And then in the end of the dinner, the end of this relaxing time, say, look, I just want to ask a question because for me, this is important. Are you, you know, Pat, are you, Kate, are you comfortable saying this is what's important to me? Okay. You're living in different places. So, um, so you're living in different places. This is the thing. It's a, there's a disconnect happening here. He may be happy living in a different place, but I don't think you are. And you're feeling the disconnect. So a conversation, because the question is, is he going to put a ring on it? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's occurred to him. He's comfortable. You're not. Repeat, he's comfortable. You're not. Therefore, you need to decide what you want and, and be really honest with yourself. Because if you say, I guess I'll be fine. And you and then another five years goes by and you're not fine, but you're five years more mad. Do what's best for you. Figure out what you want. Do what's best for you. A lot of communication. And then there's the dirty underwear. I don't know what that's about. You didn't, yeah. she didn't answer. So I must be wrong. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know I just, you want to cover quite a few questions, Susan. So we'll do, yeah. we'll do speed, speed, speed reading, speed, here. Reading, yeah. speed reading. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm scrolling and I'm still scrolling. That's how many questions there are. I'm still scrolling. Okay. Doo, doo, I know. Doo, I need that. I need that doo, song. Doo, You're supposed doo, to give me. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Uh, we're almost there. I, I scrolled too far. Now I got to come back down. You could do a little soft shoe while I'm doing this. Okay, so, um, okay, Judy Cisco, Sisto. I'm so sorry to hear about your husband. Your husband passed away unexpectedly in August. I'm so sorry to hear that. Our youngest child is on the spectrum. Will the plans I am trying to put in place for her and her sister come through? As I see, time really does fly. Again, when you guys ask these questions, the spirit sometimes says, are you sure these are the right plans? Are you sure? Because I feel like they might need to be adjusted a little bit. I feel like because you've had some time since August, that if you kind of look at things um, neutrally, you might see that some things need to be adjusted. Are you getting the same thing? Yeah, Judy, um, I think it might be hard for you. some some of the plans you're, you you've made are perhaps a little reactive given the trauma you've been through with your husband's passing and and working with your children. Uh, my sense is that a much clearer. Um, way to move forward will be apparent, um, you know, around a year, like, you know, you know, it hasn't even been a year. And it feels like if you can maintain the status quo slightly, maintain a certain sense of stability, get your bearings, have your kids get their bearings, I think by the fall, it doesn't feel like anything will be lost. And it feels like the plans that you want to put in place for your children, um, move forward with much less resistance because I think right now you're, it's just a hard time for you. It's a hard time. And maybe um, if you're pushing these plans, it may be that it's out of reaction to some of the, the sadness and the grief and the trauma and just trying to make something happen after, after what happened so unexpectedly in August. So if you can stay the course into the fall, I think I think the plans are going to nothing will be lost and the and the plans will move forward with much less resistance. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You have more grace than you think. Uh, it might seem like I've got to do it right now or else. There's more grace. There's there's more grace in the timeline for you, and it, and it, and it's he's helping from the other side. He's 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 really helping. So this is all. You, you have a lot more divine guidance than it, than it than it appears from this kind of vantage point. 
Um, but it's it's going to be okay. I think it's all going to be okay. It and it, it's, it does seem like spirit is kind of helping you maneuver this, and it's going to look a little differently than you thought. Um, hopefully that helps, Judy. Again, my heart goes out to you. Yes, I'm sorry, Judy. Um, Hi-Fi Alex says, as the woman I met over two years ago, my wife from a past life, what are her plans towards me? Whoa, the plot thickens. Uh, is the woman I met over two years, my wife from a past life? Holy crap. This is going to get deep fast. Okay. I don't know what Alan's getting, but I get yes proceed. and no. And I get proceed very, very carefully. What not are her plans toward me? Not, that sounds, not, like, that's, that sounds you know. like proceeding carefully, right? What are her plans toward me? What are you going to do with me? <laughs> there, There is an inexplicable connection and attraction, but I think that um, I it's important to see it clearly. Yeah, it I, would, clearly. I would steer clear of it. There's a lesson all up in that business. And who wants a lesson? Not me. Uh, so um, I don't know if, if she's a wife. There, You have a connection to this person from a past life, okay? Uh, for sure. There's an energetic karmic connection to this person. You, you're you right when, when you pick that up. You're absolutely correct. There is a lesson that you're supposed to learn from them. So you might want to think about that or you might want to ask, please show me the lesson here. And just try to understand that it's not just one line. Sometimes it's a series of things. Um, it also could potentially be a repeat of an old path around yes. around um, these kind of situations. Yeah, yeah. So there's an opportunity here to break break a pattern of behavior and a cycle of behavior. Bingo. Ding, 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 ding. Give that man a stuffed teddy bear. Okay. We are going to move on. We wish you all the best. Hi, fi Alex. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Artist Liz says, do you see if I will ever be able to move to California? Thank you so much. I haven't been able to do so far due to finances. Artist Liz. Okay. I'm going to just say, I'm going to ask the question, should artist Liz move to California? <laughs> That's the question because I see your energy. I mean, you've got kind of California energy. Yeah. I think it can work. I don't know if you're in a relationship, but if you're not, there's a relationship there too. If you well, are, then there's a community. That's called incentive. <laughs> I, I, I also feel California is good and I don't see there's a, 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 a wrong time frame for it. Um, I would hold a vision for it, um, make plans for it and save up for it. And um, there could be circumstances that actually facilitate that by the fall. Yeah. I don't even know how much you have to save up for it. I think, I think spirit can make a way for you. I agree. Have faith. Have faith, have fun, have fun and have faith. I'm going to try to do this quick, Jody. And I wanted to say Kevin's loving vibration is here. Hey, Kevin, loving vibration. Kevin healing medium is here. Allison stone spirits here. It's a party. I don't know who else is here, but if you're here, hi. Okay. Uh, Jody Van Tassel says message from my dad, Kenny or anyone. <laughs> and do my guides hear me? I love that. That's me. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Most times, not really. Okay. But yours, I'm sure, listen to you, Jody. I don't think they're that chatty necessarily. I think in, as in, it feels like in life they were meant a few words, but it, I, I think it's more a matter of feeling their energy, that their energy is is um, very attuned and protective. Um, sort of like when, when you ask, are, are you there? And they would say, where else would we be? Yeah. So it's almost as if um, you can um, just assume or believe or trust that they're they're around you. I get male male energy around you, um, guiding you. I don't know if you've had to buy a big appliance or a car or something, or if you were at 
like some big box retail for a major um, purchase, but it felt like they were they were there, and maybe you felt them there. It was like guy, you know. I know that's very classic guy stuff, but it felt like they were guiding you around um, a large purchase. Jody, dad, dad or Kenny was was guiding guiding her around a large person. Great, mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. Um, the message I get for you, Jody, I mean, it's hard to do mediumship in like less than 10 seconds, but um, the message is, you know, your dad sends us love. Kenny is making a joke about something. I think that he could be the person who uh, was inappropriately funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whenever they didn't know what else to do, they would, they would be, you know, like make a joke about it. Um and uh, your dad sends his love. There's a sense of you being a, a little bit of a daddy's girl also. So you had a bond with your dad, very strong connection with your dad in a way. Um, maybe that wasn't very long and maybe it was a very short connection, but 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 it was there. Um, and they're there. It's like Alan said, they're there with you 100%. And your guides do hear you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um Sorry, I'm still going up trying to find. Maybe it's going to be over here. Okay. Okay. Kitsy Stratton says, writing, storytelling, podcasting, estate settlement, enough for travel. Holy moly. Writing, storytelling, podcasting. And then we go into a completely different frame of mind into a state settlement. Yes, and yes, yes. Enough? Maybe. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Maybe. I love it. Yes, 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 maybe. Yes, 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 maybe. Okay, I can get with that. Yeah, and again, I guess the estate settlement, um, it's important not to count your chicks before they're hatched. Um, there are things that could eat up, eat that up a bit. And uh, there might be legal fees or other 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 types of fees. I don't know what they would be. Um, but yeah, certainly, certainly some for travel and um your creative juices can take you anywhere with all of this stuff. I mean, it's just sky's the limit. In fact, that's a short list. There, there's much, much more you could be doing, Kitsy, or will want to do in terms of uh, um, the storytelling is especially intriguing. Acting, screenplay, mm -hmm. screenwriting, uh, play acting, all of that stuff. The only Classes. thing holding you back is you. So can you allow yourself to be, you know, on the stage or to be the author. I mean, what can you envision yourself de being and doing? Um, and you can do it. It's just a matter of putting yourself out there. You're going to find that if you've had no's or blocks before, that wasn't your soul path. Um, if you're writing and it's not getting published or it's not gaining traction, what you're doing is you're taking your creativity and you're trying to put it in somebody else's box. So it's not yours. So you're like saying, I'm a writer, but I'm going to write this because this is what's popular. That's why it's not working. What is in your, your muse? What is here? What's in your creative energy and do that. It's just like the, the woman with the kitchen. Be you, be you. When you're on your soul path, that's when all the green lights happen. And that's when you're authentic. That's the word, authentic. I agree. And I just want to post this for a minute. Jody said, I was reminding my husband about my dad while in Costco. Maybe he was nudging me. He was nudging you. Nice. He likes to go up and down the aisles. Yeah, he does. All right. But you're I agree. He's more in the, uh, like, you know, Costco would have you know, kind of like the more hardware kind hardware. of stuff. He's looking yeah. at, yeah. He's in that kind of handyman, even the vacuums, anything that's electric or has a motor <laughs> is, yeah. is his thing. Thank you for putting that up there. Uh, I'm going to throw this up. Maria is receiving abundance. Love that. Oh, I love it. Do my guides have anything for me regarding health and general life in 2024? Homebound with chronic illness for a good number of years. I find that my clients that are homebound like this, 
it's the energy almost begets more of the same because once you're in the, the house and I understand you're in the house, right? You're homebound. I get it. But the more you're homebound, the more you're homebound. It's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. That's hard to break. Um, so can you get out on your front steps on your front, on a patio? Can you get outside of the four walls? Start doing that 10 minutes a day. It's going to change your life. And I'm getting that. Um, is there some place outside a, a window, a picture window for a window box with flowers, some place outside on, on a porch area where she can, um, where Maria can reach it to plant some, some things, some, something with color, something that she can tend, something that she can keep an eye on. Um, and again, it doesn't, I, Maria, we don't know what your your mobility is, but that you can look at beauty when you're in the house, that you can have beauty around you, that beauty is a part of your life. And plants are awesome because if you don't get out of your bed, couch, chair, or wheel yourself over there to water them, they die. So they remind you that life is fragile. They remind you to take care of yourself. And you're being compassionate towards this plant and that healing tends to come back to you. So that is a really strong energy for you. It sounds simple. I know these are sound like a simple thing. Trust me when I say little tiny things can sometimes have really big consequences. So I do see, I, I've, I've had clients that have been in bed, in bed, horizontal for years and get up get up out of bed and start living their lives. It's not something I did. It's something they did. And, and, and I know that that's infuriating for people who are stuck right in bed or stuck in their house, but little tiny things, little tiny things. It shifts the, energy. it shifts the energy, shifts the energy. And a lot of small shifts add up to something bigger. Try it. And, and again, it feels like something, living like flowers, blooming things, um, things, yeah. something that would have to be, would have to, would require you to take care of it or to nurture it or to show an interest in it would help shift this, this situation in a meaningful way. And we'll send you love and light, you know, everybody, I hope in the chat will join me in sending Maria some love and light and lift her up. Um, getting a healing, a Reiki healing is, mm -hmm. is powerful, right? And believing, believing in yourself, like I'm ready. I'm ready to move through this. I'm ready to get through this. Um, it's it's not easy. It's not easy, but you can do it. I see you doing it. Okay. A uh, couple of more. Mary Chavez says, will we sell the house in Monterey, Mexico soon? I feel yes. What do you get? Immediately got yes. It'll certainly be resolved after April. Um, and probably be, you know, before the end of the year is what I get. I'd see it actually yeah. going quite quickly. Yeah, I think so too. It's as, like as block, foreign block, transactions, block yeah, as foreign transactions go, I think, um, it does, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Susan. No, go ahead. Yeah. You said there was, there's nothing blocking it. No, I said it's like block, block, and then it goes. Yes. It's like you put, it's probably the foreign transactions you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like. Oh my God, you need this form. You didn't fill out this form. This one's not signed. It's like, it's like a death by a thousand forms. So, but it, it feels like, oh my God, this is really driving me crazy. And then it just, just falls over and, and the sale goes right through very quickly. And Mary, it also feels like it, you got your money's worth out of the place that there, there was, there were good times there and now it's time to have it gone. That's a nice way to put it. I'm just looking for one more. If you want to put up a, a one while I'm, oh, wait, here I found it. This is the one I've been looking for. Smart, Savvy, and Loved says, good evening. How does Jonathan feel about Andrea? These are kind of weird questions, you guys. Uh, but uh, I feel like Jonathan likes Andrea, maybe even loves Andrea. Uh, kind of hard because I don't have any context. It's just two names. Uh, but I'll try to go into the energy of them. Um, I feel like, yeah, Jonathan feels 
it's complicated though. Jonathan feels complicated. He feels um, confused or complicated, but yeah, overall, I think, yes. What are you getting, Alan? I think some uh, counseling would help. Um, I know in some faith, faith traditions, that is a um, uh, requirement before a wedding. Um, but I think, I think the, the, um, the building blocks are there for a relationship, but I think, um, they, they need to, there's, there's some communication frustrations or, um, not everything that feels is out on the table. So they would benefit by that. I, I think that there's, there's a, there's a big, there's a strong connection there. Yeah. There's a, there's definitely a connection there. Um, uh... Does Z think I'm irritating? Does Z think I'm irritating? Uh, these are kind of weird questions, guys. But um, does Z, I mean, who's not irritating except for me? I'm never irritating. Uh, who's not irritating from time to time, right? I mean, come on, uh, that's a human where it's, it's a human function, uh, to get on somebody's nerves on occasion. And Jackie, do you tend to uh, modify your behavior to please people around you? Um, oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Damn. So there may be an issue there of um, monitoring yourself to be what other people, what you think other people want you to be, as opposed to just being yourself. I don't think you're inherently irritating, um, but I think that it's an opportunity for you to look at how you, um, are, I don't want to say, how you might modify you, who you are to fit in or be accepted by others. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Some that's definitely food for thought. And Hey, uh, Karen with little blue Lotus astrology is in the house. Hey girlfriend. Hey Karen. Um, and Maria says, yes, making better space and getting sun there and decorate. Perfect. That is really going to that. I think that energy is just going to be so good for you. It's going to be hard to believe such a simple thing could have such a big impact, but it really will. Absolutely. All righty. Maybe one or two more. You want to pull one, you, you Alan? Go, you go for it. You're on a roll. I'm on a roll. Anya, Anya Ashdown, how are you? What do you see as job possibilities for me for the rest of the year? Um, Anya, I know that I have talked to you. I think you're one of my members. I mean, I, I'm when I'm channeling, I don't even know what my own name is, but um, I don't remember anything we talked about. So job possibilities. What do we see as job? I'm going to talk about it in energy. I see abundance. I see fruitful. I see possibilities. You know, the problem with having possibilities is you have to, kind of choose, you know, you kind of have to decide what is the best possibility for me. But I see, I see possibilities. What do you see, Alan? I definitely see possibilities. And Anya, perhaps you've been a little more um, selective, I'll say, in what you're willing to take on or what you, um, and it feels like you may need to, um, rather than starting as the CEO, you may need to um, come in at a, at a at a not starting level necessarily, but um, I see that there's there's there are opportunities for you um, seek opportunities that involve um, advancement because I think you could advance very very quickly given who you are, but you may not be able to start where you want to be. So before you turn down some opportunities, think about what the potential is to. Um, advance in that company. And you might ask them um, when you interview, what are the opportunities for growth and advancement in this? Um, I think you're ambitious and I think you have a good work ethic. And I think you can be a success at whatever you put your mind to. I sound like a high school guidance counselor. Um, but I think, <laughs> I think, oh, thank you. I think that you will, um, I think you will find something that it feels like it's in an office. Um, it might be a more traditional setup, but I think it's something that you will, um, uh, I think you like the people there. I think it's going to be an important part of your social life going forward. I think they're going to make some really good work friends. 
Wow. Which is a bonus, nice. which is an important bonus. That is an important bonus. Okay. I'm Anya, all the all the best, dear. Um, Zincat wants to know, and I I spirit just wanted me to do this. Will my son-in-law ever get a liver transplant? I get yes. You use the word ever, like ever, 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 you know? Uh, yes. I, I understand there's a timing component here, but I feel like, I feel like yes. But what are you getting, Alan? It will happen. Um, and I think, is he, re is he ready for, it, it, it could be the type of thing that is um, very sudden. So the question is, is your son-in-law um, following whatever guidance he needs to be ready to receive that transplant in terms of keeping all the, in terms of his health and doing whatever he needs for his body. And um, I'm, I'm seeing even, you know, June, July, something could happen very quickly. Really? Wow. So, right. It's after, it's after April. Yeah, it's after April. Okay. So it, it could be this year, Zencat. And I, I think take Alan's word seriously, like it, it's, you know, liver transplants are one of those things that call you, you got to be ready to go. Um, you just never know. It seems like spirit people could be falling through on the list. He could be way down on the list, but somehow all of a sudden there he is. Right. So, um, so I think it's really yeah. important that he, whatever his doctors are saying, you, you need to yeah. be, yes. Is he not take, is he not taking medication? Is he, is he, eating or drinking or doing things that he's not supposed to do for his, to be ready for this transplant, because then he goes yeah. to the bottom of the list. Yes. I, I totally agree. But also this is her son-in-law. So it's not like she can, she's probably got a little bit of a limited position with that. She can talk to them, but I think that's all very important. I, Alan is hundred percent right about that. I think that could be the problem. I, I totally think that could be the problem. So and, just tell them, a, be ready. And as a mother-in-law, you might Are wanna... you a mother-in-law? Am I a mother-in-law? For a minute there, I was like, as a mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> the things they don't know about us out the there. Things that we, I don't, yeah, um, I don't. Zencat52, as a, as a mother-in-law, um, you may just want to step back a bit from that. <laughs> because oh, I hell. think... I know I'm. I, it's not about not caring, not no, loving, know, not praying, but it feels like it could be a source. Could it could be, be a source, source, a bone of contention, if you tell your son-in-law or your daughter, or your son, um, that the son-in-law needs to um, stop doing what he's doing. It really is a personal choice, and uh, you I may not have a lot place. of control over how they conduct things. So that's a really hard place to be. Yes. A hard place to be. But you, but, but so you, we, you're Zen, you're Zen cat. So think about it like this. This is this person's soul path. They're driving their car. They don't want somebody coming over and telling them, you know, your back tires low. You never pay any attention, you know, let them do their thing. It's their soul path. There's only so many things that we can do to help other people on their soul path. Yeah. I agree. Hard position. And hard position. Thank you for all the boosters in the chat. Yeah, I, I'm going to do this everybody last else. one. Thank you. Last question. Last question. Last question. Emma L. Um, her cousin Quentin was killed in a shooting at 25. I am so. Oof, I'm so sorry. Okay, we miss him uh, terribly. Uh, just want to know he's okay and if he has any messages for his family. Quentin, his name is Quentin. Quentin is here. Quentin is in the house. I'm getting chills. Um, Kevin, the healing medium is fantastic medium. Mm -hmm. So if he does lives, catch him on his lives because he'll blow your mind with messages. I'm going to do my best. Alan, I'm going to do better. Um, so Quentin is here. He loves you. Uh, auntie, are you his auntie? No, okay. He's talking about an auntie. I don't know if that is a. Uh, if he just calls you, I don't know. Anyway, he's talking about an auntie. Uh, he's talking about, he says, fine. He says he's fine. Um, I want to, I keep going to my chest. Anyway, uh, he's fine. 
He sends us love. He knows everybody's worried about. He says it tore up his community or tore up his family. I, I get this sense that uh, people are not the same, right? I mean, not only because he was, he's gone, but because he was shot. There's, there's uh, bad blood. There's people that are angry. There's, uh, there's, um, there's just, there's just anger and bad blood. There's suspicion. Um, it's, and, and I feel like there's blame. He's saying uh, people are blaming each other or there's some kind of thing going on in the community perhaps even in the family on the down low. Uh, he says, please don't do that. He says he's fine. Um, there's, um, there's a sense that he was met. He was, he was met by angels. Uh, when he crossed, he was met by angels, but he does have family around him. There's, um, um, there's a lot of family here. There's a lot of family here. He was trying to give me some dates uh, but there were so many dates like June, uh, June, July, a lot of summer birthdays. Um, he had, he, he's pretty talkative. I cannot talk to him. I, I, I can't do a full reading, right? So whenever Kevin, the healing medium does a live or whenever people are doing lives, jump on it. And cause Quentin will come through. He definitely wants to communicate. Alan, are you getting some stuff for Quentin? I, I do briefly. Um, I've, I've, he's acknowledging some male uh, adult male influences um, that were helpful for him or tr tried, you know, that he, he listened to. And um, I don't know if there was a, a male coach or a male um, uh, someone teacher, in uh, yeah, a teacher, exactly. Someone in authority. Mentor who he really um, learned learned a lot from. And what I get is that he's working with young people up there. He wants to pay it forward. He's trying to take what he learned and also to not repeat mistakes, he's saying, um, to do it, to help, help these souls up there um, go through what they're processing as well. Um, gun violence, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of youths who are coming through the pearly gates with um with that and he, he feels like he's making a commitment to do something good up there because of the people who showed interest and um care for him yeah i'm so sorry emma em, emmy um it's maybe that's what he was saying not auntie but emmy um he was, I, I believe you guys had, you guys like played together or knew each other as younger kids. Um, he sends his love. Uh, he's fine. He, he really is fine. There's a grandmother. I'm not sure if that's great grandmother or grandmother, but there's a grandmother up there as well. Um, he sends messages to you guys. He might, it feels like he might even write something on a mirror, like a bathroom mirror or something or, or make. Um, oh, that's why I kept going to my chest. Yeah. Oh, okay. He calls, he calls, uh, he calls his mom auntie. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm ass shooting. He's a good kid. God darn. You know why? I don't know why that is, but it's true. The good, good ones die young. I, I just don't even know why the hell that happens, but um, he was very angelic. He was met by angels. Um, that doesn't happen to everybody. I see the crosses over. Sometimes a relative shows up, right? But, but he was met by angels. Um, they were very, uh, you know, it could be that there was a lot of angels there, but, um, and he's finding his way. It feels like he is, he is determined to, um, work on this issue on the other side. He's, he has so much love in his heart. I, I am so sorry for you, dear. I'm sorry for your community. I mean, I'm sorry for us. When we lose a soul like that, it, the, you know, that's that's a big hit for us. Um, so yeah, he's a he's a good guy. Um, had a big had a powerful life ahead of him. A big life ahead of him. But he's not done. It's just like Alan says, he's not done. He's working on the other side. He's he's working with you. He'll be involved. There's a sense of a younger 
I don't know if you're younger than him or, or, but there's a younger person, female that's younger than him that he's talking to or working with or concerned about, not worried, but just sort of paying extra attention to, it feels like. Um, but he's definitely in all of your lives, all of your dreams, all of your houses. Uh, he's visiting you guys. He's tried to get messages to his mother. Um, I think you, you're going to get some readings. He'll come through. He'll come through. He's a good guy. I'm so sorry for your loss. That's a, that's very hard. He is a good guy. So sorry, dear. Ah, maybe everybody can join us in semi sending Emmy and her family some love, right? Uh, some healing and some love. That'd be nice. Um, Okay, dear. Um, I think we're going to have to, we have been going now for an hour. How long have we been going? <laughs> We've been going for almost two hours. 6.30, let's, 7.30, let's, 8.30. Let's find one last. Okay, one last one. Okay. Um, I'm powered up when I'm doing this, but after I get done, it's like, I just like melt. Uh but I'm starting to lose some energy. So okay. um, go ahead, Alan, going to grab one or I'm, I'm... are you waiting for me? <laughs> I don't, I don't get a headache, but I got to say, Donna, I have a headache right now and I don't normally get one. Um, so you must be psychic, Donna Davidson. I know there's so many questions here. I wish there's I could so answer many questions. all of them. I'm, I'm looking we had 700 uh, people in the chat, so it was kind of hard to get to everybody. And, and, Beautiful people out there. Those are lovely words of in, of support. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Emmy. And and for supporting everybody. This is a lot of loss and struggle in the chat. So thank you for being there for each other. I am looking. Are you looking for one in particular? No, I'm looking oh. for something... Uplifting. Uh huh. Let's let's do this. Diane Poole asked, "Why am <laughs> there's a teaching moment here, Susan Lynn Henry?" Uh, Diane Poole asks, "Why am I so exhausted in 2024?" Oh, girl, join the club. <laughs> too tired to answer. I'm too tired to answer. Even I, I heard I was watching uh, Kevin Healing Vibrations, who's just got the best energy. And he was like, I'm so tired. You know, the energy is intense right now. It's really, really intense. So do you have an answer? Besides um, join, drink well, water? Join the club, Diane. I think that, um, you know, certainly have, have yourself checked out medically, but I think that um, those of us who are tuning into energy and learning to tune in and are tuning in are, um, are finding that holding the energy can be exhausting as well. So we're learning, Susan has talked in the past about um, spiritual hygiene, how, um, how important it is to, um, especially if you're doing readings or, or counseling or healing in some way, that you um, make sure that, that, that in that hour or whatever period or session you have, that you dedicate yourself to it and then you remove yourself from it. So much of this is about um, energy management. And, you know, people, I don't know a lot about the, the solar flares, but I know that's, that's affecting people. And we just have, um, we're just tired of all the, the news. You know, take a break from the media, um, take an Epsom salts bath, um, try and um, stay positive look at flowers, animals, do things that bring you joy. I know that all sounds like Mr. Rogers, but I think there is a certain element of um, how, what we choose to fill our heads with, our minds with, and our energy with all day long. Yeah, I totally, uh, I totally agree with you. And I'm thinking that for all, many of us, and, and astrology plays a role too. I don't know how old you are, Diane, but I'm starting my second Saturn return. Mm -hmm. And Karen, the astrologer in the chat, who's fantastic, um, said, you're going to be tired. <laughs> you're going to be so tired. So that's also something. But I'm getting a sense that, again, not to, you know, 
this be the panacea for everything. But after April, I really feel like this April energy is like a you know the eclipse. This there's a lunar eclipse and then a solar eclipse. And after that, I kind of what they're telling me is we're going to have like a an energetic roto rooter. You know, we're going to be we're going to be cleared out. We're going to be unburdened. Uh, break down to break through is what Alan said earlier. So I think that we're going to have more energy as we go into the summer. Maybe, maybe it won't be exactly what we remember we had before, but we're certainly going to feel better. I feel like we're going to feel a lot better. And and so much won't be like it was before. Our whole measuring system of are we exhausted or energized or whatever, even even all of the, all, all of that is changing as well as we move into this new period. And then you have people like T-Barb <laughs> because I haven't felt it at all. I felt great. I have more energy. <laughs> T-Barb is always, she's like the outlier. She's like the one that goes this way when everybody's going that way. T-Barb, you, you may want to cut back on the Red Bull. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's good. If you guys have energy, awesome. And, and that's a really good point because some of us are going to have energy. Some of us are not going to have energy. It's okay. But I think Alan is correct to always get your checkups, always take care of your health, drink water, ground. The energy is off the charts. So if you find yourself eating a lot of snacks, uh, eating a lot of sweets or carbs or snacks, you're trying to ground. So your body is feeling unsafe, untethered to earth. Um, grab the grounding crystal, whatever that is for you. Look it up, look it up on Google and then go, I'm drawn to that one. You know, get the grounding crystal, ground yourself. And and also walk to the extent you can where you live, walk, walk outside, walk barefoot in the grass or the earth. Right. So this is uh, one of my amazing astrologers, Little Blue Lotus Astrology. Uh, so, yeah, she's very helpful. These, these kinds of people can be very helpful. Okay. Um, and, and you can understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Right. Um, so check out her channel, check out her website. Um, I think it's little blue Lotus astrology.org is her website. Um, what crystal for physical pain? I don't know. Look them up, look, look up the crystals and because they want you to use your own intuition. So look it up, look on the screen and say, I'm drawn to that one. I don't know why. Or go to the crystal shop and literally pick them up and hold them in your hand. And you're going to say, I never feel anything. That's fine. But go and pick up 20 crystals. If you can pick up 20 crystals and you don't feel anything at all, then okay. Maybe crystals are not speaking to you right now. But it could be just that you didn't find the right one or that it's 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 a subtle. It's not like you're going to pick it up and go, wow, ah! <laughs> it's it's a subtle thing, you guys. All right. Alan, have we done it? Did we do it? We we have done it for another another round, sister. Another we really, round. Uh, I, I um, always enjoy my time with you. I enjoy the listeners and the, the great comments and questions that they bring to our time together. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, um, I'm humbled by many of the things people are going through out there. Yeah. And I, I hope we can provide some comfort or hope for things to shift and change. Yes. And you can check out Alan on his website at alanjohnsonintuitive.com, A-L-L-E-N. Um, yeah, if you want a private reading, I recommend Alan Johnson Intuitive. But all the people who've been on, on this chat stream, uh, Little Blue Lotus is fantastic astrologer. Um, uh, let's see, I don't know, uh, Kevin's Loving Vibration, great tarot, great healer. Um, Kevin's um, healing medium. You can check him out. You can Google all these people. They'll, they'll pop up. Uh, for me, um, I'm going to be doing a really interesting thing on Sunday night with Sybil, uh, Sybil Harmony. She's going to be healing your chakras on live with her pendulum. 
If you've never seen her do this, it's absolutely fascinating. That Sunday night, you don't want to miss it. I, I've been healed by her. Alan's been healed by her. She's the she's the real deal. Um, and then Monday night, I have Jen Lynn and Teresa Prentice coming on to talk politics. It's going to be a blast. So I've got like a lot going on. I hope you guys can check out one of those things. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. And uh, check out the people in the chat. Some of my friends are hanging out in there. Some of these other people that have uh, channels. And, and Susan, another um, shout out to Dr. Vicki Skirbo of um, Seeds of Transformation. Um, a brilliant reading. She combines Kabbalah, tarot, and astrology. It's it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing, you guys. So her website is the seeds of transformation.com. Uh, I did a video with her not too long, a few days ago. Um, yeah, so there's so many great readers out here, guys, and, it, and it's so helpful. It's like every reader gives you a piece to the puzzle, and you know, pretty soon you've got a better idea of why you're here, what's going on in your life what direction to go, what direction maybe may not be the best place to go. So yeah, there's so many great, great. And, and read here. each other too. I mean, if, you know, if you're, if you're starting out on this, hook up with others and, and read them, do an exchange. That's yeah. That's how Susan and I both started years and years ago. Years and years ago. Um, happy Mimi. We really are closing this down. And if we don't close it down, we're going to be here till tomorrow. Um, I really appreciate your super chat, um, from your husband and your son. I don't have, um, I don't have their names. I'm just going to quickly, and then literally I'm not going to take any more questions. So if the, if the moderators could just put that in the chat, like all the time so that people don't, uh, ask uh, that'd be great. Um, yeah, we do have an uh, embarrassment of riches, uh, a goatee man. We really do have an embarrassment of riches on our community. Mm -hmm. Um, your husband says, hi, uh, there's something about pasta. There's something about potentially about mayonnaise. Like maybe they don't like mayonnaise. I don't know. This is just these weird messages I'm getting. Um, your son is, there as well. Uh, somebody, I feel like I have something going on with my head. I don't know if that's, um, I don't know what that is. I don't know why that is, but I feel like I have that going on. And, um, the messages are, they love you. Uh, these two men that you're missing in your life. And I'm so sorry. It's a terrible uh, situation that you're in. Um, they're together. It seems like there's something, somebody's fishing. I don't know if that's husband, son, or another relative, like a grandfather or an uncle. Somebody's fishing. There's a sense of Huckleberry Finn. I don't, I'm seeing that hayseed thing coming out of your mouth. I don't know if that means I'm having an adventure. I don't know what Huckleberry, I mean, it could mean it's a metaphor. It could, could mean anything. And I don't have a lot of time uh, to, um, uh, go deeply into it, but they're okay. Also there's, um, energy in my stomach. So, so somebody's got issues with GI problems. Um, some issues right down here in my gut. Um, that all makes sense. Okay. Um, I don't, it's, it's really, they won't stop talking about this Huckleberry Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn with the little, I don't know what that's about, but it, Hayseed, uh, I don't know what that's about, whether they like to hike. I don't, I don't understand what that is, but they're, they're doing fine. They're happy. They're together, but they do their own thing. There's like a separation, but together at the same time. Anything you're getting there, Alan? Yes. I'm getting that they're focused on the new energy that's coming in for you, which is very big and very powerful in a good way. And it's moving you into a new it's moving. It's like a. It's moving your boat into a new area. So there, there, there again is the Huck Finn, like the raft. So your 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 boat is being moved into the middle of the stream, and where you're going to catch a current, and you're going in new places. I think, lit perhaps literally, but symbolically, emotionally, in many other ways. There's there's really they're sharing your excitement about this new 
um, period for you and what it what it's going to bring in. Um, you may be surprised at what it brings in, and you haven't left them behind. They are with they are very much with you, and they're like saying, "Go on, go, go, keep going, keep going. We're go, we're with you. We want to see you go. You're you're taking us with you." So um, it's like a you know a kid in a car seat that says, "Go." <laughs> so there's there's an element here of them in, um, enjoying what's next for you as much as you will. Yeah, that's bittersweet. But I I think you're ready. They know you're ready. Um, uh, I think you think you're ready. Uh, but yeah, they're they're uh so supportive and loving of you. There's so much love. There's just a, a ton of love coming to you of uh, appreciation even. There's a sense of appreciation uh, for you. And I do think you're moving on. I don't know how long this has been since all this has happened, uh, but um, it's time. Um, your husband is saying it's time. It's okay. It's time. And he he says, you know this. You, you've, you, I think you've either seen him or had a vision of him or had a dream of, you've had some sort of maybe a dream of him that was actually a visitation um or that's coming um because again it this these opportunities are right there they're like right in front of her and um i i do feel you're moving in this new energy as you talked about it's excited i'm excited for you I'm excited. I'm excited for you too. I really am. And I know that, you know, you're carrying them with you, that they're coming with you, that, that they're, they're part of this process, right? Absolutely. Very much. Oh, a part you of have the had a visitation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You've got a lot of psychic energy, happy, uh, very, you're very, um, clairvoyant. Yeah. Everything is fine. You're you're making all the right decisions. Your husband is saying you're making the right decisions. Don't second guess yourself. Sometimes you make the decision and you're second guessing. You're like, I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Should I should I do that? He's like, stop second guessing. Make your decision. You can trust your intuition. Yes, you're on the right path. Okay, dear. I I wish you all the best. And I I think you're. Um, you're going to experience some really beautiful times ahead. And keep us posted. I'd be interested in hearing how this unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it again. We'll do this again. Uh, it's always hard whether to know to do politics or personal um, because everybody needs both. Thank you. Happy Mimi. Um, the same to you too, dear. Uh, you have a beautiful energy. Um so, but we'll do it again. If you, you guys, uh, it feels like this is, I, I think Alan, and, and you're right, Alan. I think Alan's like, they need this. People need, you know, it's Well, true. it's just, I think it's nice to take a, brace, a break from the break drumbeat from politics. of politics all day long. Yeah. And it's like, how do you get to sleep after that? So <laughs> I think this is, not, this is nice. This is like a little, we, we had a nice little snuggle with everybody. Oh, snuggle. How sweet. All right. Thank, thank thank you. Thank the moderators. Yes. Thank you, moderators. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Right. A goatee man. A goatee man says I vote for a personal because there's so many political readings out there. Yeah. I think you're right, guys. I think you're right. And the spirit guides get a chance to teach and everybody gets to benefit and they, they love that. So um, good. Good, good, good. All right. So happy to see you guys. Take really good care. And we're only one month away from April, so we'll we'll do the countdown next time. Oh my God, he's starting to scare me. I'm starting well, to be, scare. It's gonna be okay. April eighth. <laughs> maybe we, we can have um. We should we'll... do a show on the eclipse. You know, I took that day off. I didn't even know it was the eclipse, and I just took that day off. I'm like, oh yeah, that's why. Well, well, get out! Yes. I'm gonna get out a bunch of aluminum foil because I need to kind of like protect this. Yeah, it's gonna be in Texas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
All right, everyone. God Bye, bless. You guys. God bless. Much Take care of yourself. Yes. Take really good care of yourselves. Much love, everybody. We'll see you next time.